Um, yeah, okay. So, I've got a cold and I'm still putting it out and blowing my nose, so I don't know if I can, how well I'll do, but we'll try. Uh, now, uh, I don't know what you will think of, of, of meditation. I think the standard image of someone sitting in, uh, sitting cross-legged or in, uh, what's that position called? Rick, what's that position you were sitting in? What's that position you sit in meditation where you cross your legs? Lotus. Lotus, that's it, sorry. That's how, that's how tired I am. Uh, I forget everything. Um, but, uh, you know, doing that. Um, but I'm just going to give you, give you a different example. Uh, have you all washed the dishes at home in the kitchen sink at least once in your life? <laughs> oh. Never expected that coming, did you? <laughs> I saw that. Um, well, you know, what do you do when you wash the dishes? You know, you, do you do anything else when you wash the dishes? Usually? Well, I don't know, you might have a conversation, but generally. Sing. Do you sing when you wash the dishes? Turn on some music and. I was singing. That'll work. I was there watching after I sang something. Thanks. I, when I cook, that's a creative time. That's, a, that's right. Communion and spirit. But Cooking is it is. Because I cook by intuition. Like my kids accuse me of never making the same thing twice. You wash and serve. But yeah, you, you, you're, if you're not focusing on washing, you're focusing on something. So, I mean, you're moving, you're. You've got a pattern. You've got you've got a lot of stuff happening when you're just washing dishes. But I think that's a really good example of meditation. And the point I wanted to make about that is, not meditation isn't just sitting in the lotus position or cross-legged or whatever. With say, say you know saying om or whatever it is people say. Um, <laughs> I think you know I did um, back when. Well, something I forgot to tell in my introduction, when I was 16 or so, I was quite suicidal. Well, I, did, I hated life. But I knew intuitively that I, if I died, I'd have to come back and do everything all over again and get it right the next time. So that's when I originally took an interest in, in martial arts. And an interesting thing my Aikido instructor said when I got into that was, uh, and Aikido is very interesting because <coughs> you're trying to bring two opposing forces into harmony. And uh, now, reflecting on that, that's, that's quite interesting. But he said that <clears throat> Aikido was moving meditation. So in doing the Aikido movements, you're not focusing, you don't have music on, uh, or, or anything like that. You're, you're focused on you know, bringing your body and the, or somebody else into harmony. And uh, in, 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 from the way perspective, you're bringing opposing, you know, the... Uh, Opposing forces, bringing about the third force through the, through the movement, and uh, but the the uh, uh, so but the things you tend to do in any kind of meditation, unless you're specifically thinking about something, is you either or well, you're focusing on something specific. Or, and or you're trying to quieten the race mind, as Alan calls it, the mind where you start thinking about something and think about something else and think about something you're else You're not again, thinking, you know, actually, your mind is being bombarded with random thoughts, <laughs> constantly incoherent and, and just uh, nonsense thoughts. Is that, what's, is that the thoughts of other people bombarding the it's, just a free, the, There's like all sorts of thoughts in the ethers. And they just bombard you because you're not in control of your own mind. I call it race mind. People call it different things. I have is you, is yours, yeah. I have two that I experience. One is uh, where I'm just thinking about something and it drifts into something else. The other is when I'm half awake, I'll have this really rapid flashing. It sounds more like Alan's race mind, but rapid flashing images of different things. And I don't know if that's what Alan says, picking up something in the ether. But in meditation, in any kind of activity, which you, could, you might think of as meditation, you're trying to quieten that down and focus on a particular thing, like in some meditations they focus on an object, or in some meditations they might look within themselves into their own body. But some people when they meditate they can see the organs and see what's going on inside. And uh, they could be doing things like, I did light and sound meditation, sand mat, on your meditation, and uh, you focus on the light or, or a sound, something like that. It's more complex than that, but that's the basic idea. And 
the result of that these meditations is first the the personalities aren't being engaged well you should be engaged anyway uh, and it allows you to bring parts of you into balance like if you use a, a light and sound machine I guess you can you can go within to parts of yourself and, and bring those parts within you into balance. More complex than that, and that's something I'm still exploring. Uh, in the, and a flow wrote on the forums an interesting thing. I don't know if it was in chat or on the forum. She said that uh, uh, you know, body, the way you position the body uh, has to do with the laws. So when people do yoga, that's a kind of meditation too. They're, they're balancing the body uh, through put, stretching it, or, or there are many kinds of yoga, I realize. So do we understand what the lotus is? <coughs> Taking the energies from the right, channeling them into the left, and from the left into the right, and bringing the hands together. So what you're doing is negating the polarities of the outer view of the mind. Because this, the legs are attached to the lower spheres of the tree of life, and the arms are attached to the upper. And what you're doing is you're bringing them all together and helping to stabilize your mind. That's what the lotus position is in yoga. When you're doing lo lotus, when you're doing yoga positions, you're actually channeling the energy from different sections, through different sections of the mind, trying to clear it out and trying to free it. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, thanks for that. But I'm, not a, I'm not a yogi master, so... No, well, that's, that's the explanation I need. I couldn't even know how to put it into words. Um, <clears throat> that's an appreciation. Maybe I was a yogi master in the past, but no, this, this, year, this lifetime, I don't know. Uh, a thing that came to mind about meditation was one of the meditations I tried was going out into the park and just quietening my mind and trying to be, keep, be aware of you know just everything around me. Something which doing Aikido helped me increase because doing a martial art, I mean, a few of us have done martial arts, you become more aware of your body and more aware of your movement and thus more aware of what's around you, the energies around you. So where, you know, an ordinary person, I see so many people say driving a car, they're not aware that I've just pulled up behind them or I'm beside them and they almost crash into me. But when I'm driving a car, I can feel where all the cars are around me. If I'm walking down the street, I can feel where all the people are around me. And, you know, if someone's looking at me, you can feel that. I mean, women have that natural intuition already. And I used to, as a kid, used to go, at the girls are sitting in front of me, go, what? Nothing. And... But one of the things I, um, I was in Alaska was the last time I was, I was here in Ketchikan where there's the, the energy lines of the earth converge in Alaska as well as other places. And Alaska has a lot of energy and the, the, the friend I had there, she used to, she told me this interesting thing which I found fascinating. She used to hate walking to school. It was only 10-20 minutes I think, just round to a school, Ketchikan's tiny, and she hated walking there. So what she did every day is every day she chose one thing that was beautiful. She just picked one thing that was beautiful. Maybe that tree is beautiful or that, that bird is beautiful. And every day she picked one more thing that was beautiful. And after a month or two, her walk to school was the most enjoyable part of her day because everything was beautiful. And a thing I observed is, like for example, when you came here to this building for the first time, it's the first time you've been in here, it's the first time you've seen it, do you remember that feeling of kind of everything's a little bit overwhelming because you've got these new th things, you've got new objects and, 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 build and rooms and everything you've got to become aware of. But now we've been here a couple of days, um, you started to maybe automatically ignore some of the things that are around. You probably, you know, if, if, I, if I told you don't look at the, don't look at the wall and I ask you what's in the pictures on the wall, you go, oh, uh, I can't remember. Because now, I found that when I walked, say, down at the bus stop, the first time you might be, oh, there's this interesting house, or that's an interesting house, that's a stop, that street goes up there, and oh, that's a nice lawn, you know, you, you notice everything. But as you go on day to day, you know, the mind starts kicking, start thinking about stuff, and you ignore everything around you, you just switch off to it. 
So a lot of that quieting the mind and being aware is 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 reverse is not doing that. It's like being the practicing consciousness where you you, uh, you you know you breathe so that you don't lose that awareness of your body and you, you can watch the uh, personality shifts. So the purpose a lot of meditation is it, it, I, I would summarize as being about you know focusing on something. It might be you know awareness of breathing or uh, you know your body like in, in an, a martial art or I don't know, Jeff. I guess is painting. Painting might be even a meditation for you because you're 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 drawing out from your your intuition these images and uh, and Ra too maybe. Um, but it's it's that and bringing parts of you into a ba into balance by by working on those parts which are out of balance through you know physical movement or through through you know developing your 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 mind and, and, and emotions and the energies with, associated with that. So, uh, you know, the, what you eat, you can feel how it affects the balance of your body. When you eat something that's not good for you, you feel it puts you out of whack. Uh, when you, <clears throat> you know, I was talking about emotional freedom technique where you, you tap all these en energy points in the body and it, it, it resets uh, negative emotions that are stored in the body. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, so all these things, that's what meditation is about, is focusing on a particular uh, something, particular something maybe external to you to help reflect on the internal of your focusing on your body to bring everything into harmony. So that's just um, a summary I wanted to, to give about, uh, and, uh, about what meditation, uh, my, my impression of what meditation is from my experiences. Like Alan said just before, uh, the body is the epitome of harmonic segregation and uh, you know, each part exists in, in isolation to each other, but um, it all uh, exists in harmony. It all, all produces the whole who we are. And uh, you know, so meditation, well, focusing on something. I mean, we're pract anything we practice is a kind of meditation to, to to bring all that into harmony by focusing on what needs working on. So, did anyone have any thoughts on that? What what pulls my mind to it is, is often going now going going to the foundation. Of it. What I see is that meditation is built upon three principles, three practical principles. And what you're saying when you say uh, focusing on something, the way I interpret that as being is having divided attention that you're not completely absorbed in your surroundings, that you know, your personality isn't completely absorbed in some, some type of fantasy or some type of object, but you're dividing your attention so that your attention is, is not, you're, you're centering your attention to, to be divided in a way that you're not um, overcome by your surroundings, but that you're able to maintain yourself by focusing your attention on something. And the attention is of a character that it doesn't have to be on one thing, it could be on many things. And, um, and then it's self sensitive when you try to get a sense of the sense of the vibration of the body. And and that's what you're saying with the keto and, and the movement, how you can wear the movement because uh, that's how body the body communicates it through sensation. And then the other one is self-observation, where, you, where you're not just dividing your attention now, but you're also putting, you're also using that point of consciousness to observe yourself and observe the world around you at the same time, so that you're actually a part of the experience that's happening now, rather than the experience just happening, where you're, where you're, where you're not just a part of the, what is it, being observed, but you, you, you take a step back within yourself and you actually occupy yourself while you are in the world interacting with other people and experiencing the world at large. And often, um, because meditation is usually trying to connect with the flow of energy in the body, with the centers, and, and trying to manipulate that in order to, um, in order to, in order to connect it to the higher centers. You want to bring the energy in the lower centers and connect it to the higher centers. And that's usually, that's usually what meditation is. is uh, 
that's usually what you're trying to do in order to connect. Well, what I used to do in order to connect with your soul, that's what I used to do. Now, what you're saying, it seems with active meditation, it seems to be more about uh, a utilization of those three things, which is divided attention, self-sensing, and self-observation, and putting it all together to, uh, to create a conscious state where you, where, uh, where your mind is in the moment and your body is in the moment and, and the, the energy and the emotions are in the moment. And they, and they both are community, they both are being worked on, or, well, they both are being exercised because you're both, you're attending to both of them. Right? You mentioned about the girl and um, she walking through, walking through, um, walking home to school and she would focus on something beautiful. That was a making a positive association. So the, the personalities that we can evoke in that moment can, can, uh, where they can attach, not attach, but where they can connect to those, to those objects in a positive emotion. So it's making a positive association. So when she sees it, it creates a, it creates that movement inside of herself and it keeps her, her grounded in, in, in that type of emotion. And she's able to, to move in that emotion. Because usually when people, like you were saying, when they go into a place, at first, when they first see it, when they first experience it, when they first experience it, they don't have any associations to these things. It is new. It's like a new environment. So when they first go, when they experience it, and they are all around the people, and their personality starts to shift, they begin to form associations to so that when they come into the experience, you know, it's not new anymore because we already have a relationship to everything around and all the people around. But if she's practicing consciousness, if a person's practicing consciousness when they come here, then that doesn't happen because then they're, they're, uh, because they're grounded enough to try to maintain that observing state or that state of consciousness, practicing consciousness of that they can actually experience the surroundings and not form that um, that association to it. So where they are actually, as the new age would say, in the moment where they're in the know, they're actually trying to to gain an understanding, to gain an actual experience from the people and the experience around them. They don't just latch on to one thing that's related to one fragment personality, but that they're trying to connect to everything at once. Like not just connect with it, with it mentally, but connect with it with the body and the emotions because everything has to burn inside. Like the body, say the body has to be tamed and everything else. Like even when we're here and we sit down, the body has to learn something too. The body is learning through these experiences too, but just in its own way. Like the Lord of nature and everything. It's learning, it's learning through its own way. Often it's like when we eat food, like we eat consume food, the body forms a, 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 a positive association to, to being here because it, it gets something out of it. So that, and that adds to that meditative state that you were talking about being there. How do you mean that? No, that's, that's it. Good. The, the thought that came to mind was, uh, you know, initially uh, when, you <clears throat> when you start working on self, you know, you get bit, you do bit by bit. So it's like when you you talked a lot about consciousness, which I know helped me a lot, and becoming you know staying aware. So maybe like consciousness is a good example. You become conscious. You remember to oh, I remember to breathe and be conscious, and you do that maybe once a day or once a week or something, and then gradually you build this up. So gradually, when you practice focusing or practice a martial art or practice some kind of maybe meditation or, or activity, you uh, bit by bit increase that. The, the frequency at which you are, are practicing consciousness or being aware or paying attention or whatever. And then as, each, as you do that, you can deal with all the, 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 the negative things that you might want to deal with. Like I remember Dina was asking, how do you go about doing this? Uh, and until eventually the idea is that 100%, you're always doing this, you're, you're always 100% conscious throughout the day. That you don't lose consciousness or the, the what you're trying to develop in yourself becomes you 
not just on and off, or, or you know, you have good days and bad days, or you, you're, uh, and uh, <clears throat> I haven't thought about the laws, and I've thought what it was. Um, so, but anyway, you build it up, and over time, it stops becoming, uh, like, uh, you become a living, like you say, you know, we, we, prayer was a good example, I think, I think it was Alan who said it, I can't remember. So people pray, but the idea is to become a, you become a living prayer yourself, you become that thing. And, uh, and so, you know, you know, this is way beyond med- this, the, what normal thinking of meditation is. It's, it's like, you know, it's not that image anymore. We're not just talking about this image of sitting in the lotus position, or it's that too. But it's all these things where you're, you're <coughs> working on being conscious and, and focusing on, uh, focusing on, on uh, aspects of yourself to bring everything into harmony and overcome, you know, the laws you were born under, the situation you're in, uh, your own negative reactions to things or, or the, you know, negative feelings that are in the body or whatever it is, your, or your diet or whatever it is. It's actually the, the practice of, of uh, uh, focusing on, on doing these things until they beca- you become that, that goal. You become, uh, you know, you... What's the word I should use? What's, you become... <coughs> uh, you reach the next stage of birth, I suppose, in the world the highest stages of birth. When I originally asked about prayer many, many, many years ago, they said people don't know how to pray. And actually, in a lot of ways, prayer should become what Goethe talked about as part of of observing self. You should incorporate all the five senses into an image of what your prayer is. Now, of course, in the Lord's Prayer it says, only pray for the kingdom to come within you because everything else will be given to you as needed. But a good way to pray then would be to um, pray and see yourself surrounded by light, envision yourself, feel the light moving within you, and invoke the light to fill you. As perfect prayer. Or when you see others, you should see them and observe them and feel and sense them from all the dimensions of your being. And when you do that, then you connect with what they represent within you. <clears throat> the thing that just came to mind was I have, you know, back in the, 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 the group I was a member of, where well, I'm a member of still, I suppose, but. Uh, there were people who would meditate all day, and I've got one friend, I think he meditates seven hours a day and thinks it's fantastic. And probably for him it is, but he doesn't do anything, he doesn't go anywhere. And uh, he actually had, a, he had one of my other friends, was his girlfriend, or I don't know if they're going to get married or what happened, but they, I think they split up. But, you know, that's a, I thought that was a lost opportunity, because if they stayed together and had kids, they could have actually gone a lot further. But because it's a very new age sounding thing, they say, oh, that the guru doesn't just meditate. Well, she doesn't actually, if you pay attention to everything she said, she doesn't say that. Uh, but the solution to all problems is just meditate. Be vegan and meditate. The way of the monk. Yeah. But you see, he acts like a monk probably because he's so just happy and content. He won't go out and do anything else. And I think he's missed a huge opportunity. Uh, because even though he really feels really excellent, I mean, the meditation makes you feel great, and it does a lot. It doesn't actually, I don't think it is a way of the monk. He's not working on his, his lower nature at all. He's not working on anything. Yeah, but it does bring light to the body and makes yeah. you feel good and gives you a positive outlook. Mm. Oh, it's good in that respect. But I think in that is, yeah, he just sits Some people really drink to do that. <laughs> Others smoke dope. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, That's true. He to earn a living. <clears throat> he had a really good job, and he, because he doesn't do all the things, did all the things normal people do, like smoke, drink, go to movies, all that crap. He uh, he had plenty left over. He just saved up a lot of money, sold his business, got a lot more money, and he just does that all day. And if he needs to work, he just goes somewhere and works. I think he went to he went to another country and worked for a while, and came back. And so he's money. living off his savings. Mostly. Yep. Last I saw him. Mm. If you live simply, you'd be surprised how far it can go. Yes. When, um, years, well, not years ago, I'm not that old, but, <laughs> but um, I remember I told you about this. When I used to, you know, I have all types of experience with meditation. And there was a time when I was really like living like a monk. Like really living like a monk. I was meditating. 
called yourself the hermit? Oh, yeah. yeah. With this year. <laughs> I was meditating like the whole day because I had like a, at the time I read like a few case readings and I looked at his method of meditation and, and he called meditation, this is like his method, he called meditation, um, basically to him meditation was connecting to one's higher self. That's what the meditation was. <clears throat> learning how to communicate with your higher self. I had already communicated with my higher self, but, but I never, at that time, I didn't completely connect where you actually have some direct experience. And at that time, I, I, was so, uh, I was so adamant about experiencing what I had experienced when I was 17, when I actually went into, into the realm of the souls, and I actually experienced my soul self directly, but it was like, it made me do it. I didn't do it for my own ability. So I had made the I made the uh, I made it my mission to experience this reality as much as possible. So I decided that I wasn't going to leave meditation until I experienced it. And I was meditating up to I would meditate the whole day and eat nothing. I would eat nothing. I would eat like one meal a day at, at like, like like one o'clock in the morning while I meditate the whole day. And I had that, and I could do that because of the conditions in my life made it possible for me to do that. And I would do that constantly. And eventually, I actually did experience the reality of soul. And I did experience it numerous, numerous occasions. And I gained, I gained access to certain knowledge that, that led me, that obviously eventually led me to, to the form. But, but there was a problem with meditation was that like you said, you're not doing anything because the conditions aren't available, aren't available for you to work on those aspects of yourself. You can't work on your, uh, you can't work on the, the, the fragmentary state of uh, personality because the the things that the, the fragmentary personalities live for isn't there. Like uh, the, the the relationship that it has to different people, that it has to objects, to every form that is in present matter isn't there. So you're not doing anything. It's like, I often think about what Bruce Lee used to say about um, about uh, martial arts, how how people in the past, they used to practice, they, they, like, they would have competitions, but there was no, no contact. They would like, they would give points on, 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 um, on, on contact that, that they think would happen but not actually landing blows so there was no full contact. If you couldn't hit them, yet. Yeah. yeah, so he said that it was like dry land swimming. And the way that I looked at meditation was that it was like dry land swimming. You can only really develop yourself, you can only really become a great swimmer when you're in the water because then you are challenging those different aspects of yourself come out when there's afraid of water that may not like being wet, that may, every, every other, every aspect you can think of that may manifest itself when you're in when you're actually in the motion of being in the water and what it brings out in you, that's what you need to move forward. And you can't do that when you're just driving and swimming. That's what meditation was like to me. And although I can go into meditation and I can experience that reality if I want to, uh, I was told not, I was told that I have to bring it to the try to bring it to the next level. And that's why I became really attracted to the the Gurdjieff thing, there's another reason why. But it's because you're in the moment. And in that moment when you are actually out there, that's when you have an access of uh, the world. And that world becomes a mirror for you to, to actually utilize consciously to develop those parts of yourself and to bring that, to bring a, to bring a redirection so that your energy isn't lost in nature. But naturally, that's what will happen because all these fragmentary aspects of your personality and the lower nature is all grasping upon the, the, the image that is impressed on matter that it has a relationship to. And you lose that, that vital energy through that, through those connections. So you have to kind of begin to, to, uh, to amass that, that energy back into the body. And, and in order to do that, often a person has to connect to the body first. Because everything is through the, is through the physical. We have to begin with the physical body first. That's why I mentioned self-sensing. And that's why 
when you mentioned a fear of you know, connecting to the body, I can see that you were using that as a foundation because you have to have a foundation to 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 utilize consciousness. You have to be able to 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 utilize the energy that is in the lower centers and often what, what you do is that you have to connect to sensation in the body. You have to learn how to move the energy in the body. And in Gurdjieff, he, he, he would he would talk about sensation and the need for 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 being in the body, uh, for being inside the body, keeping the, the attention in the body. And like you were talking about how you have to develop this over time because attention is like a muscle, and it's only it's only as strong as you as you practice it. Um, but you have to you can't practice it um, you can't practice it. Well, it, well, it depends on how you practice it. Kind of like a muscle, like you can actually lift a lot of weights, you can do all types of exercises and workouts. In the same way, attention has such a, attention has, um, it doesn't have a, like, it doesn't have a lack of, 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 of how many points you can be attentive to. Like, you can be attentive to your whole body at once, you can be attentive to only your ear, you can be attentive to your pinky, Pinky toe, or whatever, and can be attentive to a lot of different things. But the whole point is that a mo uh, that sensation grounds you. It's grounding, and it isn't. Uh, and it doesn't. It it doesn't dwell in imagination. Like if you, when you feel a certain thing, you feel it. Uh, like if you feel pain, you feel pain. It doesn't lie to you. Uh, like like the person personality fragmentations have are all you know. Some are stuck in the illusions of what they are. They think they think they're higher than what they really are when they're when they're not, and all these other different things. They embrace philosophies and, and they have mindsets that that are totally of the world and, and totally nonsense. But the sensation in the body is something you can always come back to because it doesn't lie to you. It's a, it's like it doesn't lie to you. That's why the body is so important. And, and, and why it's a foundation, and why it's the it's, it's, so necess, it's such a necessity to be able to connect the energy and be able to move the energy in the body, because that's what power that's what powers the mind. And and there's the body that exists in the moment, kind of like how a dog exists in the moment. They act in the moment. The body exists in the moment. All of its all of its urges and its hungers are in the moment. And yeah, so I just uh, I don't know, the meditation thing typically typically makes you want to talk more, I guess. Because, <laughs> no, I mean, because I've forgotten about that story, yeah. No, that's a that's a really good one where you're meditating all the time. Mm. Yeah. I know I'm, I'll tell my car story then about about I know you haven't heard this one, the only Flo's heard it, I think, or Crystal maybe, I don't know. Uh, I had a bad uh, a really bad personality, my driving personality. It really wanted to get out and beat up people. Um, <laughs> and I live, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've got a few yeah, here. Sure, yeah. people who have one of those. Uh, well, you had the road rage personality? Yeah. Oh, badly. Um, where I, especially where I live, people do things like they're coming off the highway and they stop in the merging lane because they don't know how to merge. And, you know, you're merging in and someone decides to pull over into that lane while you're merging, you know, stuff like that. And you know, you want to get out and kill people, it's really bad. So I was talking, I think on the chat, and I was saying, look, this is real trouble, it's driving me nuts. And this is when we're getting to triangulation, and uh, where you, 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 so what I did is I, I decided to remain conscious. I think I get told to, get asked to tell the story all the time, but it's a useful one. So I decided I'm gonna catch this personality and remain conscious with it. So what it is, you know, I'm going out to the car, being aware of my breathing, walking down the stairs, of my breathing, walking to the car, being aware of my breathing, still in the same personality I was in, whatever personality that is. Get it open, unlock the car, oh, still there, breathing. Get into the seat, still there, breathing. Turn on the engine, still there, breathing. Start the car moving, two seconds of unconsciousness. And I'd switched. Literally two seconds where everything went, not black, but like, out of, you could feel, I felt the switch. It was like two seconds where it was safe for it to happen. I mean, it was just pulling out and there were no other cars. But that, I found that two seconds when I was pulling out was the switch point. And it was literally unconsciousness. 
when you know, driving. It's when the car started moving, I switched to that driving person and I said, gotcha. And I talked it over months, talked it down, talked it, you know, not, not bad, I talked it, look, it doesn't matter. Yes, that's a bad driver. It's not worth him getting angry over I, again and again and again and again. And the culmination of this, this is brilliant. I drive a lot on the high, local highway, which is about, so the speed limit's 50 miles an hour, but everyone drives about 60. I think I was driving about 60 or 65, I don't know. And uh, I'm driving along and I can't remember exactly what I was doing. I was drawing back into the seed self and I could do that. I, I, that's another thing I've been practicing because when I go teaching, I create a new personality for teaching kids. And then from new personalities, it's really easy to draw back. So I drew back. I've been practicing drawing back as much as possible. And I drew back at the time I was, that personality was there. And my sort of core personality, and it merged at 65 miles on the freeway. And I was like going, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? It was really, really weird. weird absolutely unbelievable sensation. And it's sort of fine now. I was driving at high speed and it merged. That I didn't expect. That was that was the freakiest thing I've ever experienced. So that's so the lighting of me is an awakening. How do you know that you've withdrawn into your seat? Uh, well, I, this is what I feel it's going on. I feel like I'm a shell. And I had this thing when I was a child, and Ra was the first person to describe what I was experiencing. I'd have this moment where everything seemed like a big kind of illusion or movie, and I called it a reality phase shift. But actually I was drawing back into the seed self, and I can do it right now. And it feels like everything's kind of weird and disconnected, I don't know. And I could do that, I, I found, I, I, it hap I remembered it specifically, because when I created the, the, the happy, happy, happy personality for teaching kids, because that was only a really shallow personality and it was easy to switch back. And I just always, I, I just feel it, like you feel like, I feel like Amos is a shell. That's basically, or whatever the personality that's talking is a shell. And the, the, the something else, me, is, is sort of sitting with Amos sort of around. That's all I can describe it as. But, yeah, I, I, I don't know how best to describe it. Do you think it might be the type of car, the color of the car, the, the ability of the car, or if you were in a different vehicle that that personality might not? No, it was all, no, I changed cars, actually. After I did that one with the catching it, <coughs> we bought a new car that was the same. So no, it's definitely because of driving. No, no, I, I, we switched. No, originally I was in a, a small, tiny box car, and they're 660cc, whatever that is in, in, I don't know, tiny. And they are absolutely terrible to drive on the highway. It's like, you want to take over a truck, it's like, for like five minutes trying to overtake a truck. And, and that was, you know, you know when you, truck drivers, I understand now, if you're in a vehicle that you hate having slow down, like, oh, I've got to slow down. Oh, it's going to take me forever to get back up to speed. And that drives me really angry. It really, really made me super angry to have to slow down. It's anyway. also the brakes. When it goes to the weight, when it steps on the brakes, the brakes can fade out on everything else. So they do. They block the wheels. And often he's got, to, uh, he's got to use his gears to slow down. That car actually would actually had reduced brakes. Like, you'd have to you get in a normal car. You press, after driving, you, you press the brakes, and you end up slamming yourself into the wheel. Uh, it had really, really... <clears throat> it didn't fade, it, it would actually lock the wheels of that tiny like car. Like a motorcycle, when you slow down, you slow <clears throat> down more with the, by downshifting the gears and the brakes. I'm trying to think if that ever geared, I don't think it geared down much. But anyway, I drive a Prius now, which is like the calmest car to ever drive. Hmm? Is that a car, a Prius? Prius, yeah, that's an electric, it's half electric. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I know, nice car. And yeah. I'm sorry. I was just wondering if you uh I because I do the same thing, but I let down and I can stand it while I'm driving. Um and I can feel like it sometimes starts without me initiating but it's uh, from the movement, the movement of the speed of the car that movement. Yeah, I, I suspect movement has a lot to do yeah. with it. But another thing about personalities, I think even a Japanese show, TV show said this, is when you go, you ever gone from one room to another and forgotten what you were doing? Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> never, never. <laughs> well, there we go, yeah. 